There are 21 RMCs currently in the world, including two that are not yet operating. Out of these, I have ridden seven. Steel Vengeance, Twisted Timbers, Twisted Colossus, Wicked Cyclone, Iron Rattler, New Texas Giant, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. All of these are really good rides, with most of them being great and one even amazing. In this video, I am going to be taking my knowledge about my favorite elements on these coasters to make my unpopular opinion filled ranking of all of the RMCs in the world. First of all, I just want to say that this is a prediction video, as I have not ridden all of these coasters, but rather I used what I know about the ones that I have ridden, as well as a look at my personal preferences for a coaster, to make a prediction about the others. Also, if you like roller coasters and amusement parks, then make sure to subscribe to this channel because I upload new videos just like this one every single week. Also, 90% of you guys aren't even subscribed, so bruh, subscribe. Anyways, let's get into this ranking. So starting off immediately with a coaster that many people put in their top 5 RMCs, at number 20 is Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. Yeah, I'll give you guys a sec to pause the video and scream. You done? Alright, cool. Let me explain. Wicked Cyclone's third lap is just a collection of pretty dumb ejector pops that truly don't do anything for me. But at the very least, Wicked Cyclone has a really good first half. Storm Chaser, on the other hand, just has a camelback, an overbank, and the rest of the ride is just like Wicked Cyclone's second half. Just ejector pop after ejector pop with no uniqueness or anything. This not only is boring AF, but it also slams your body into the restraints and into the side of the train, which really hurts. Also, there is that dreaded trick track double up, which is my second least favorite element on Twisted Timbers, just behind whatever this thing is. The drop looks awesome, but other than that, Storm Chaser looks boring and even painful, which is why it takes the bottom spot. At number 19, we have a coaster that I referenced while talking about Storm Chaser, and that is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. Now, I have seen people put this coaster in the top 5 RMCs, and even top 10 that they've ridden. <laughs> <laughs> Airtime thrills. <laughs> Coronavirus! But really, this ride isn't great. The first drop is fun, like all RMC first drops, and the first half is pretty fun, but the second half really, really, really brings down this ride. Like I said with Storm Chaser, it's boring and even a little painful. I actually felt myself put my hands down while on the third lap because of how disappointed I was. I only got two rides on this coaster and I was like, yep, that's enough. And then we went over and got six more rides on Superman the Ride. It's still a fun ride and still probably in my top 50, but nowhere near my top 20 or top 10. At the number 18 spot is a ride that many people call the worst RMC, and that is Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This ride has the same second half problem as Wicked Cyclone, but honestly, the first half seems just a little bit better. The inversions look really fun, especially for someone like me who loves that fun gliding feeling and hang time feeling as you go through RMC's inversions. But once you go through that stall, Joker has the exact same problem as the two previous coasters on this list. Boring, bunny hops, awkward banking, and then it hits the brakes. Number 17 is Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. Another coaster with a stupid second half that does absolutely nothing, but at least this ride has a really interesting first half, starting with the barrel roll drop, as well as going up into many tall airtime moments that give strong, sustained airtime. This first half makes up a little bit for the second half of this coaster, which is pretty much the same as everything else. And that's why I have it here at the number 17 spot. 
Number 16 is the second coaster here on this list that I have actually ridden, and that is Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This ride, guess what, has a bad second half. <laughs> This one, in fact, is probably the worst second half because it is very painful. My legs and shins got crushed on this ride, plus my elbows slammed into the sides of the train. Especially on this part, which I am convinced was made by Satan himself. The barrel roll drop is awesome, and those three Camelback Hills are honestly the best airtime moments on any RMC. Don't kill me. But from there, it all just goes downhill. Number 15 actually doesn't have a bad second half, but that's mostly because there isn't really a second half at all. This is the Raptors, so Railblazer at CGA and Wonder Woman at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. These coasters are crazy. They whip you around through crazy inversions and awesome airtime moments. I've only ridden Wonder Woman, but they are mirror images of each other, so I just grouped them together. Personally, I actually like sitting in the middle of Wonder Woman because it gives you that floaty stomach feeling on the hills, which is my favorite part of all coasters. The inversions are great, and it really feels like you're flying through the track. The main problem is just the shortness of this ride. Number 14 is a coaster that is sadly opening in 2021, which is Jersey Devil at Six Flags Great Adventure. This ride looks very similar to the Raptors, but fixes the length problem. Still, I feel like coasters higher on this list will give a more exciting ride experience when looking at my personal preferences, but still, it'll be a pretty great coaster, and I hope that I'll get to ride it in 2021. At number 13 is a ride that looks super fun, but a little bit too short to be higher up on this list, and that is Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. Fortunately, this coaster can't have a sucky third lap, but unfortunately, that is because there is no third lap at all. The whole ride, though, seems full of sustained airtime moments and fun inversions, as well as an awesome wave turn that looks so fun. While I still think that I prefer the length and strong floater airtime of Goliath at the same park, Twisted Cyclone still looks like a super fun ride. Number 12 is a coaster that I think gets way too much hate, and it looks like a mid-tier RMC versus a bottom-tier RMC, and that is Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This was the first topper track Woody that RMC made, and it looks awesome. That drop seems spectacular, the inversions and outer bank turns seem crazy, and the airtime looks sustained and fun. Sure, this coaster doesn't have the same out-of-control craziness as some of the other RMCs, but I actually like that as the out-of-control feeling is definitely not something that I look for in a coaster. Anyways, with the strong airtime, hang time, and outer banks, this coaster seems great and not at all a bottom-tier RMC. At the number 11 spot is the first coaster that is not in North America, and that is Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This ride really focuses on inversions, which in my opinion is awesome. I love that gliding feeling when coasters go through smooth and graceful inversions, and RMC does a great job of this on many of their coasters. The inversions on coasters already on this list, like Twisted Timbers for example, are some of my favorite moments on these rides, so a coaster full of these seems super fun. Obviously, I prefer sustained airtime, so it's not like it's a top tier RMC, but it still seems like a really great ride. Number 10 is a coaster that will send ejector airtime fans screaming around their room, so promise you won't break anything, okay? Tyler, you got that? You sure? Okay, cool. Number 10 is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This is the first and only launch coaster that RMC built, and I can definitely see why, as it had a buttload of problems before it opened. Overall, this coaster seems really great, with the launch looking super fun, the drop looking awesome, and the wave turns and outer bank turns looking great. 
But the signature element, the quad down, doesn't seem like it'd do too much for me. I am more of a fan of sustained airtime that gives you that floating feeling in your stomach, and small ejector pops don't give me that. For that reason, Lightning Rod for me is just a mid-tier RMC versus something top tier, and dare I say, it doesn't even look top 35 in the world. In addition to all of that, it is a shorter ride, which also brings it down just a little bit. Number 9 is a coaster that either you forgot about or you are currently screaming at the screen as how I would think that this is better than Elrod. That coaster is Goliath at Six Flags Great America. This ride seems so fun. The drop looks amazing and so does that camelback before the dive loop. But of course, what this coaster is known for is those two awesome inversions that look to be insane with their awesome hang time. These two elements, the dive loop and the zero-g stall, really make the ride. Goliath, like Elrod, is a very short ride and that's why it's not even higher up on this list. And now we are getting into the top tier RMCs, starting with number 8, which is Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This ride is really, really great. The drop is one of, if not the craziest drops on any RMC. That Heaven Roll is super awesome, and finally the final drop off of the quarry is amazing. The rest of the coaster is pretty good as well, consisting of some fun overbanks that act as good transitions between these three main elements. But really, it's just the drop, inversion, and hill off the quarry that really make this ride. It also does a great job interacting with the quarry wall as a whole, even going through it at one point. All of those things make Iron Rattler a top tier RMC, and I am so lucky to have it at my home park. Number 7 is not at an amusement park. Yes, this is Wildfire, an RMC a topper track wooden coaster at the Kolmarden Zoo in Sweden. This ride looks awesome. That drop looks insane. The inversions and overbank turns look super fun. Plus, there even seems to be some floater moments thrown in there as well. Overall, this just seems like a really fun ride, and that's why it is at the number 7 spot. Number 6 is the original RMC, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. I love this ride. The drop can give you even standing airtime if you get enough room with these awesome restraints, and overall, it's just my type of ride. It gives you that awesome floater stomach feeling that I love, and you really feel like you're gliding through the track during those awesome massive overbanks. And it is a pretty long ride and is super rewritable. These make it such a great ride that makes the three and a half hour drive down to Six Flags Over Texas super, super worth it. Number five is my favorite coaster that I have ridden in California, and that is Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This coaster is so much fun, like so, so fun. The drops are great, the inversions are super fun, and the airtime moments that it gives you are amazing. Plus, this coaster is a dueling coaster, and not only that, a Mobius Loop dueling coaster, which not only makes this ride super re-rideable, but it also adds to the excitement as you try to duel every time. This adds an extra level of uniqueness and fun...ness? As there are no other RMCs or coasters in general that are quite like Twisted Colossus. And now for the big top four, which consists of Hakuge, Steel Vengeance, Iron Gwazi, and Zadra. But what order will I put them in? Well, number four is one that has yet to open, and that is Iron Gwazi. This coaster is tough, because honestly, I keep going back and forth on whether Steel Vengeance or Iron Gwazi will be better. I like Iron Gwazi's layout better, but Stevie just is such a long ride that makes it really tough. 
but right now I am leaning towards Steel Vengeance, which means that Iron Gwazi will be here at number 4. It looks to have an amazing layout full of awesome inversions, crazy airtime hills, and that awesome wave turn over the station. The drop looks incredible too, at 91 degrees. Of course, at number 3 is Steel Vengeance, which is currently my favorite coaster that I have ridden. This ride is amazing, with some great sustained floater airtime starting with that awesome first drop. Plus, you get an awesome gliding or flying feeling through those awesome inversions, and the ride is super re-rideable and long. This coaster really checks all of the boxes on my list of the things that I look for in a coaster. Of course, the second half isn't great, but the rest of the ride makes up for it so much that it doesn't really bother me. At the number 2 spot is Zadra at Energylandia. This coaster checks almost all of the boxes on my list that make a great coaster, and does them incredibly. That drop looks crazy, there are plenty of strong floater camelbacks throughout the ride, the inversions look to give some great hang time and seem to give you that awesome feeling of gliding or flying through the track, and finally, this coaster is for sure re-rideable. Now at the number one spot, the coaster that I think is the best RMC in the world is Hakuge at Nagashima Spa Land. This ride looks surprisingly incredible. The drop looks awesome, especially because you have a little bit of speed going into it. The inversions look super fun, and it seems like you are gliding or flying through them. Plus, the ride is long, with more than a minute of ride time. It just seems to check all of the boxes and do it better than any of the other RMCs in the world. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Comment below what you disagree with and what you agree with. 90% of you guys aren't subscribed, so what are you doing? Subscribe, because I make new videos just like this one every single week. Check out the POVs that I used in this video in the description below, and as always, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out.